it always seems impossible until it's done very well said by nelson mandela so whenever we are going to start doing something great in our life that's huge and we feel demotivated just remember it's quite natural to be demotivated and this is the point where your life is going to get a turn or it is going to get a new turn your life will become beautiful after this if you pass through this so from this we are going to start with a zoology i am your diksha ma'am hello my dear students and welcome back to victory batch and i am your diksha ma'am so today we are going to start with the zoology portion of this batch and i am going to start with the chapter structural organization in animals so right now you have just done the botany section in the biology so today we are going to start with this chapter so what about this chapter you must have heard of it so most of you or most of the students who are uh, watching this uh, lecture right now you must be in the 11th class or you must have completed the 12th standard and you and you are here for your revision of 11th class or might you have uh, uh, completed the 11th and 12th both and you're preparing for NEET so if for any of those please uh, uh, pay very much attention to this chapter because yes this is also important from NEET point of view so if I talk about the NEET point of view around one to two questions are asked from this chapter so this chapter is uh, divided into two portion one are the animal tissues and another is the cockroach so if i talk about the uh, uh, animal tissues so the minimum uh, and the maximum question that are asked is one to two whereas from cockroach at least one question is asked in every year's need so as you know now that it's quite important so one thing that i would like to tell you here is that whatever i'm teaching you just follow uh, the, uh, the just follow the lecture make good notes one very important thing that you need to do if you are seriously studying for anything and you want that topic to remain for longer duration is to make notes along with the lecture yes so you have to make notes and then you have to solve the dpp the daily practice paper that we are providing you and also read the ncrt uh, most of the ncrt will be covering uh, along with this i have some clips of ncrt so we'll be reading that along with that too and very important i'll also be covering all the previous year questions in the lectures after every topic like from uh, uh, like for example if i have covered the simple epithelial tissue then i'll be providing all those pyqs we'll be solving them together this will give you an idea how important the chapter is and where you have to focus more so it's kind of a full-fledged lecture all that i need is your little uh, you know attentive nature here so that you should do it nicely so without wasting any time let's get started with this so first of all what is a tissue the basic question because since we are talking about animal tissues here what is a tissue so a tissue is a group of cells so this is what you 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 have been uh, you know learning since uh, your uh, these primary classes but what actually is a tissue is let's do the elaborated uh, definition of it so tissue it's a group of cell very true group of cells now what type of cells similar in similar in structure function and origin structure function and origin if i say i have some group of cell and they look up or they appear very similarly in their structure all around yellow in color yes also these cells are performing the same function for example these are secreting certain enzymes and their origin is same now what about the origin so we have three germ layers ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm now what are these you must be thinking ma'am we have never heard of them no problem so when the spova and sperm they fertilize they become zygote now from this zygote now from the zygote arises the embryo now in the embryo now in the embryo they these all these cells in the embryo they are separated in three layers you call it as three germ layers okay so in, in the embryo there are three layers of cells known as ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm and all these three germ layers what are these these are nothing just the layers of cells in the embryo 
and all these three germ layers they give rise to the entire body tissues in you so if i say all these three germ layers uh, if uh, if i say if, if this is a tissue and all the cells of the tissue they are arise from ectoderm only that means they have similar origin so similar origin means all the cells should have been arrived from a same germ layer and what is a germ layer you got to know that these are certain layers of cells in the embryonic stages from where your tissues are formed right so this is what you call it as the uh, tissues but one more thing that's missing here is along with along with intercellular substance now what is this intercellular substance that means that means all these cells they cannot live without the substance present in between them so there are certain substances proteins and fibers which are present along with these cells so this one comprise or this total is known as the tissues so group of cell similar in structure function and origin along with its intercellular substance this is what is the correct definition of the tissues all right so let's talk about the which phylum in animal kingdom got tissues for the first time so you must have heard of a lot of phylums isn't it porifera cilium trator tenophora platyhelminthes nematelinthes right all these arthropoda annelida you must have heard of it so out of all these in the animal kingdom the first animals to have true tissues were cilium triates the sponges or the porifers they didn't have any tissue they just have the aggregation of cell and all these cells are different for example if i give you a cluster of cell where we have a green cell and we have this cell which is a, a you know pink color cell no these cluster of cell will not be known as a tissue they are just cellular aggregate so the first phylum to have the tissue for the first time was the cilium triate so the cilium triates cilium triates had the tissue for the first time in animals in animals so the tissue term in uh, zoology the tissue term in zoology was given by a scientist named bicart so bicart was a scientist gave the term tissue in zoology in botany that's someone else now there are different kinds of tissue in our body as i've say that all these three germ layers are giving rise to all the tissues in your body so that means there are a lot of tissues in us right so let's see what are these so we have four kind of tissues epithelial connective muscular and neural or nervous so these are the tissues that we are going to discuss in this entire uh, chapter so first of all is epithelial tissue the origin of of, of this epithelial tissue is ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm that means the epithelial tissue can be arrived from any of these three germ layers or all these three germ layers are forming the epithelial tissue next we have the connective and muscular they have been originated from mesoderm whereas the nervous tissue is originated from ectoderm but there is one exception here except microglial cells microglial cells are the cells uh, uh, are the special type of cells in the nervous tissue apart from neuron you must have heard of neuron so these tissues or these cells they are originated from mesoderm except the microglial cell the entire nervous tissue has been originated from ectoderm but only microglial cells they are originated from mesoderm right all right so that's the four type of tissues that we are going to study in this chapter let's move further and talk about the epithelial tissue first epi means upon that means it is a tissue that is present above anything all right so first of all let's discuss the detailed version of how an epithelial tissue is made up of since it is a tissue and it's a group of cell so this these group of cell they can, they can be arranged in a single layer or multiple layer they can be arranged in a single layer or the multiple layer right so first point that you have to note here is that they can be present or cells can be arranged in single or 
मल्टीपल ले सिंगल और मल्टीपल ले अनदर थिंग द सेल्स इन द पिथीलियल टिश्यू दे कैन बी ऑफ डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ शेप्स इट कैन बी फ्लैट इट कैन बी क्यूब लाइक इट कैन बी कॉलमनार सो दे कैन बी डिफरेंट शेप्स डिफरेंट शेप्स ऑफ सेल so the another point these cells are very much tightly packed if something is so tightly packed it will have be having uh, the uh, the space between th these two cells will be very less so if the space between these two cells is very less that means the substance in between them will also be less so their cells are compactly packed cells are compactly packed with little intercellular matrix or substance little intercellular substance or matrix all right let me show you one thing so for example we have drawn these cells and here i have drawn these cells now so if i say these cells they are very tightly packed so the sub, uh, sub, uh, sub space in between two will be very less but here the space is so much so substance can be more this is what epithelial cells they have in little the intercellular substance all right another point to note here is that these cells can be present if i say these are present here in the form of uh, single layer or multiple layer okay so this is how the single layer it looks like so the uh, cell or the tissues epithelial tissue which have a single layer of cell you call it as simple epithelium and the one which have number of layers is known as compound epithelium so the, how this is how the cells in the simple epithelial are now let me show you the compound one so this is how the cells in the compound epithelium they looks like right now below them is present a basement membrane what is present below them a basement membrane and below the basement membrane is present a connective tissue this is how connective tissue looks like and connective tissue have blood vessel so i have drawn this blood vessel in the connective tissue but not in the epithelial tissue yes i have not drawn this in the epithelial tissue so that means your epithelial tissue is avascular wherever the word vasa comes that means blood vessel so it has no blood vessel it has no blood vessel right so this is a connective tissue so connective tissue is another tissue so you will not consider it in the epithelial tissue epithelial tissue is just made up of these two things one is your epithelial cell and then we have down there a basement membrane now what about a basement membrane what is a basement membrane so basement membrane is uh, something which is which does not have any cells it has its fibers and proteins and this is providing support to the epithelial cell so the epithelial cell should remain at one place only second thing we are saying this is uh, avascular the epithelial cell they are avascular they have no blood vessels so that means if it does not have a blood vessel so from where it will get its nutrient we are studying from like uh, from many classes that blood is the uh, is a body fluid which helps in the transport of substances and give nutrition to the tissues but what here what uh, what what's wrong here the thing that's wrong here it does not have a blood vessel so from where the epithelial tissue will get its nutrition though they are living cells so they will get all their nutrition via diffusion from the blood vessels in the connective tissue yes you heard it right so the basement membrane will allow the diffusion of these substances fine so it will get nutrition via diffusion from connective tissue from connective tissue now what about basement membrane as i've told you the basement membrane is made up of fibers and glycoprotein what it is made up of it is made up of fibers and glycoprotein and glycoprotein and yes it does not have any cell so cells are absent it is non cellular and what is a function it provides support 
right now where do you find the epithelial cells that's a question now ma'am where are the epithelial tissues present in our body so they are present in your skin yes so you will see they are usually present in all those surfaces which are uh, uh, free in contact with the outer environment for example if you'll see here these epithelial cell have a free surface this is a free surface we say they always have a free surface we say that they always have a free surface and that means they are exposed to the outside environment and they are present in the form of coverings and linings in the form of coverings and linings coverings are uh, usually we use the word when we are talking about our outer surfaces and linings we are usually using the word when we are talking about inner surfaces for example if i'm talking about coverings that means i'm talking about skin so skin is also packing your uh, various uh, or it's like an outer packing of your body or lining is also the packing of your body but inside the body like your stomach stomach have the lining and both are exposed to outer environment how this is exposed to your uh, outer environment like this one i can do scratching and so right and uh, inner one linings for example blood vessel blood vessel also have epithelium and it is in in contact with the body fluid or stomach it is in contact with your food so it's present in the form of coverings and linings if it is present in the form of coverings and linings so that means they can be easily breakable it's more uh, prone to wear and tear right it's more prone to breakage so at that time at that time if they're more prone to the breakage so they need to be reformed as well so yes epithelial cells can be reformed they can multiply and you call it as power of regeneration these cells have a power of regeneration they can multiply they can multiply they can multiply all right so now let's talk about the ncrt of this all right so we commonly live, refer to an epithelial tissue as epithelium so singular is epithelium and plural is epithelia this tissue has a free surface as we have discussed it which faces either a body fluid or the outside environment and thus provides a covering or lining of some part of the body the cells are compactly packed with little intercellular matrix there are two types of epithelial cell the simple epithelium and the compound epithelium all right so this paragraph will be coming coming back to this passage but before that let's study the classification part all right so let's talk about the classification of the epithelial tissue so first of all as i've uh, told you epithelium or epithelial tissue is divided into two categories based upon the number of cells they have all right so the first we have is a compound epithelium because this epithelium have multiple layers and then we have simple epithelium it has only single layer of cell right so simple epithelium have single layer of cell single layer of cells whereas this one has multiple layers multiple layers now the simple epithelium is further divided into various categories based upon the shape of the cell based upon the shape of the cell like you have a squamous epithelium here then you will find the cuboidal epithelium columnar epithelium then we have ciliated and we have pseudo stratified pseudo stratified so these are the various types of uh, the epithelium under the simple epithelium and the classification is only based upon how the cells they look like and here in the compound epithelium we have a stratified and transitional stratified and transitional in the stratified again we have various categories we have like squamous we have cuboidal we have columnar and we have columnar ciliated so these are the various categories okay so in the squamous we have further two categories one is keratinized 
another is non keratinized so see guys you must be thinking ma'am this is so much no this is not so much this is just a crux of this chapter so if you understand the entire this chart then further you will be finding all the things very simple if not then maybe you will get little complicated in things but we don't need to right so let's get started with the simple squamous epithelium first so in the simple squamous because it is simple it will be having one single layer of cell so if you'll see the cells here they are like flat tile like cells you can see from the surface the structure of cells are quite flat cell like the tile tiles of the floor right and from the above surface if you'll see you will see these as of different shapes they're polygonal cells what is polygon polygon means anything which has a lot of sides like hexagon have six side like polygons have many side right so here the cells from the surface they are polygonal but here from the sides you can see the cells as flattened cell so what is the structure of cell the cells are flat cells flat cells like tiles on floor fine since they appear like tiles on the floor, that's why you also call it as pavement epithelium. What is pavement? Pavement is that surface where you walk, okay, where you cannot drive but you walk. It's a side surface uh, built on the road so that people can walk on them, okay. All right, now what is the function? Because they are very thin cells, very flat cells. So they are usually present on all those surfaces where we need to perform the function of diffusion, right? So the main function is diffusion of substances. Diffusion of substances. Let me show you how and where diffusion of substances is taking place. Let's talk about example. First of all, alveoli of lungs. So in alveoli, in alveoli, there is diffusion of oxygen and CO2. Then we have blood vessels. So yes, in blood vessels also we need to diffuse things. So epithelium which is present, the simple squamous epithelium which is present in the blood vessel, it is also known as endothelium what it is known as endothelium and also in our body cavity which is peritoneum so if you will see these are our organs present you can see the organs present for example this is an organ right so around the organ are present epithelium so for example there are two epithelium present one epithelium is this another is this present around organ one epithelium is present around the body wall if this is your body wall so one epithelium will be present around body wall another towards the uh, your organ so here forms a cavity and this cavity is known as peritoneum so inside your body is a present cavity you call it as a body cavity or peritoneum so all this epithelium in this peritoneum is also simple squamous epithelium right for example this is a body wall this is your intestine so intestine is surrounded by an epithelium and there is also an epithelium around this. So the space present between these two epithelium is your peritoneum or a body cavity. So this also have what? It also have simple squamous epithelium. Also it is present in the nephron, nephron of kidney. So the most uh, uh, in nephron what structure? Bowman's capsule. Bowman's capsule. So, in a kidney, you will be uh, you will be studying a structure of nephron, and in that there is present Bowman's capsule. So, there you are, there is a uh, function of filtration of urine, uh, filtration of blood to form urine. So, there is also the function of diffusion that's taking place. So, that's why there is also present simple squamous epithelium. So, the most common uh, you know example that uh, the question is asked from is your alveoli and blood vessels, and sometimes Bowman's capsule. Peritoneum is rarely. Asked. all right so that's about the examples my dear students let's solve the questions the kind of epithelium which forms the inner wall of blood vessel is squamous cuboidal columnar ciliated you can easily mark the question right now because you have not covered any of the epithelium so answer is squamous but when you have covered the entire chapter or the entire syllabus at that time this can be a point of confusion so one thing that you have to do is remember from blood vessels the things are getting diffused towards the tissue and whenever the, there is a function of diffusion we need very thin flat cell and that's your squamous all right next 
simple cuboidal epithelial tissue. So simple cuboidal epithelial tissue, if you can see here, the cells, they are cube-like and above here, the cells are polygonal. So cells are cube-like. Cells are cube-like. What's the function they perform? Secretion and absorption. Wherever you are absorbing things or you are secreting things, at that place, you will be having the cuboidal cells. Now, what are the examples? Let's see. First here, again, you have this structure known as nephron. This is how nephron looks like. It's a structural and function unit of kidney. In nephron, we have this structure known as PCT. If you can see here, this is PCT. So in PCT of nephron, your cuboidal epithelium is present. And also, as you can see here, there is a gland, which is a salivary gland. So these smaller ducts of the salivary gland, they also have this uh, simple cuboidal epithelium. So here, these smaller ducts, which ducts? Not the larger one, smaller ducts of salivary glands and in fact, the pancreas. And in pancreas, we also have smaller ducts. So that contains simple cuboidal epithelium. So next we have is our for example, this is the structure you can see. So this is the structure of pancreas. Can you see that? That's the structure of pancreas. So in pancreas, we have two ducts. This is the larger one. These are the smaller ones. So these smaller ones that you can see, they contain your simple cuboidal epithelium. Another example of cuboidal epithelium is this. What is this? You must be thinking, ma'am, what is this? So these are sperms. So uh, in the gonads, what are gonads? Your testes and ovary, your sex organs. So in the gonads are present certain epithelium, which leads to the formation of these gametes. So that epithelium is known as germinal epithelium. So germinal epithelium is also simple cuboidal. Fine. That's about the example of simple cuboidal. Let's talk about the simple columnar. So column, what is a column? So whenever there is a formation of a building, the, you know, the engineers, they made columns inside of them. And these columns, generally known as pillars, they are like uh, the support framework of your uh, entire building. So yes, these cells, as you can see here, these cells, they appear, if you can see here, these cells, they also appear like long columns. So you call them as columnar, right? So they appear like columns, appear like column or pillars. So how are they or how do they look like? How are they different from the squamous? Squamous were flat cells, cuboidal was cube-like cell. And here you can see these are tall cells. They are tall and slender. Slender means thin, tall and slender cells. If you notice, their nucleus is present at the basal portion. What is a basal portion? So when I'm talking about with respect to a cell, if this is a columnar cell, so basal portion is this portion, downward portion, and this portion is apical. Apical means apex, above. So they are present not in the center. In those cells, the nucleus was in the center. As you can see here, in this, the nucleus is in the center. The nucleus is in center nucleus in center but in the uh, columnar you will find the nucleus at the base so nucleus is present at base all right now one important thing that i am going to discuss here is sometimes the columnar or cuboidal sometimes the columnar cells or cuboidal cells they have microvilli like this so the function of microvilli is to increase the surface area what is a microvilli? Microvilli is nothing. They are finger-like projections and they are extension of plasma membrane. They are what? They are extension of plasma membrane. So microvilli, they are finger-like projections and they are extension of plasma membrane or the cell membrane. Right? So the function of these microvilli, wherever they will be present, they will be increasing surface area. Increase surface area. For example, if this is a cell, if I ask this cell to uh, do a function of absorption, that means to take something in. So this will take, for example, only two or three molecules, whereas this one will take around 15 to 20 molecules inside. So that means due to presence of this microvilli, we have more surface area for the absorption, right? So the function, uh, wherever they will be present, what function they will be performing? 
secretion and absorption just like that of cuboidal now as i've told you it's also present in the cuboidal so yes cuboidal can also have microvilli so how does it will look like like this so this is microvilli and this microvilli it increases surface area so wherever the microvilli is present you call that epithelium as brush bordered epithelium what epithelium brush bordered epithelium so both cuboidal and both cuboidal and columnar epithelium can be brush bordered but now as we have discussed certain example so out of all these example of cuboidal only pct1 is brush bordered is brush bordered okay what's the full form of pct it's written here proximal convoluted tubule okay so this one is brush border so this is the most common question that is asked so both columnar and cuboidal they can be brush bordered epithelium that means they can have microvilli next we have is the example so you must have seen this uh, diagram somewhere if you have started your 11th class in your school or if you have done the digestive system chapter so these are nothing but the microvilli and the villi of your small intestine so these are villi and here are present certain glands so intestinal glands and gastric glands what are gastric glands the glands of stomach the intestinal glands and gastric glands they both have simple columnar epithelium so gastric glands are the glands of stomach all right okay moving further to the next the question and answer round find the correct match squamous duct of uh, duct of the glands cuboidal pct ciliated blood vessel columnar air sacs very simple the squamous is not present in the ducts of gland rather the ducts have cuboidal Yes, the cuboidal is present in proximal convoluted tubule, that's PCT, whereas ciliated is not present in blood vessel, it is, or the blood vessels contain squamous. Air sac is another name of alveoli, you must have done in the lower standards classes, whereas columnar is present in intestinal glands and the gastric gland. Alright, so the answer to this question will be 2. Next simple ciliated epithelial cell now uh, like um, your columnar and cuboidal they had the microvilli and you call it as brush border just like that these cells they will be having cilia they will be having cilia like this like this okay so this is cilia what is the difference between cilia and microvilli cilia are hair like and microvilli are finger like Microvilli was the extension of the plasma membrane. Cilia are altogether different structures. Okay. So here, cilia, what's the function? Wherever the cilia is present, they're like here. And they keep on moving like this. For example, there is a big ground with the, with the grass of great height. And there is, you know, a lot of windy day. So whenever there is a lot of windy day, the grass move like, moves like this. Just close your eyes and imagine. So just like that, cilia moves. So wherever the cilia will be present, it will be moving substances. So the function of cilia is to move substances in specific direction in specific direction all right so where it is present it is present in bronchioles trachea or better say respiratory tract respiratory tract now what's the function of the cilia in your respiratory tract okay so for example if this is your respiratory tract and here are present cilia like this in a specific direction if any dust particles enter inside your respiratory tract the mucus cells which cells mucus cell will secrete the mucus trap these particles and cilia will propel them out in a they will move in a specific direction and propel or push them out from your respiratory tract so whatever mucus is present uh, or it, it gets out from your uh, uh, respiratory tract it usually contains mucus along with all the, the dust particles right and it is thrown out with the help of cilia another example to note here is the fallopian tube fallopian tube what is a fallopian tube oviduct in a female reproductive tract 
so if you remember or you must have uh, done the basics of reproductive system in lower classes so there was a structure known as fallopian tube like this and here are present ovary this is the uterus like this so here are also present here are also present cilia like this okay so the function of cilia the function of cilia is to move ova here what is ova the egg so it will lead to the movement of ova so it is leading to the movement of what mucus plus dust particles and that is helping in the movement of ova fine all right so let's move further to the next next we have pseudo stratified epithelium pseudo means false pseudo means false stratified means layers or layered so these are false layered okay now we are calling it as simple but we are talking about layers that's why it's pseudo pseudo means false so when you will see this epithelium you will you will be thinking that this epithelium is multi-layer why because when you will see the cells these cells they appear like this and anyone who will see you they will uh, they will consider it as multi-layer but as you can see if this is a basement membrane both the cells or both the layer of cell or both the type of cells are attached to the same basement membrane so you call it as simple if you have noticed in the diagram we have made the in the in the uh, in the in that we have a multi multi layer of cells right if you remember this diagram we have multi layer of cells here this layer of cell is attached to basement membrane, but this one is not attached to the basement membrane. So this is multi-layer or compounds epithelium. But if you'll see this one, only lower layer of cells can be attached to a basement membrane. Here, one single layer of cell. Okay. But in this one also, all the cells, they are attached to the same basement membrane. So you will consider it as simple. But in appearance, it looks like compound. So that, that's why you call it as false layer. So pseudo stratified. So here we have these cells. You call it as apical cells because they are coming above the surface. And these are basal cells. These are basal cells and these are apical cell and that's your basement membrane fine so where do you find this so where do you find uh, your pseudo stratified so the pseudo stratified is generally is of two types one is ciliated and another is non ciliated another is non ciliated so where do you find the ciliated one you'll find the ciliated one in your trachea all right i think i have written trachea here also but you need to correct it it's just bronchioles it's not uh, trachea okay so trachea trachea contains pseudo stratified uh, ciliated epithelium all right whereas non ciliated is present in the parotid gland where it is present in the parotid gland in the parotid gland all right so that's about your pseudo stratified epithelium and simple so let's revise what epithelium contain uh, or what uh, organs contain which epithelium first of all the squamous where does squamous is present alveoli air sacs of lung which you call it as and uh, it's present in your peritoneum in the blood vessels and bowman's capsule second is simple cuboidal if it is brush bordered it's in the pct in germinal epithelium we also have that and in smaller ducts of salivary gland and pancreas then we have columna the columna is present in the glands which glands intestinal glands and your gastric glands the ciliated one is present in bronchioles and in the fallopian tube and then we have pseudo stratified that is present in the trachea the one which will be having cilia will look like this and the one which does not have cilia it's present in your parotid gland right also in the olfactory epithelium what is olfactory epithelium so though pseudo stratified is not mentioned in the ncrt but you know sometime the question from trachea can be asked okay because this is also ciliated this is also ciliated but the another category that's why first i have written there but since we are uh, doing that in detail so that's why i have written trachea here okay all right otherwise uh, let's talk about the compound epithelium 
So the function of the simple epithelium was diffusion, secretion and absorption. And the function of cuboidal or the sorry compound will be protection. Because it is multi-layer, so the function, the basic function that it will perform in your body will be protection. All right. So in the compound epithelium, as you can see this diagram, the cells are multi-layer. And the cells which are the, present in the upper layer, they are considered for classification. For example, if I am saying that the, in the compound we have uh, the uh, squamous epithelium, in compound we have uh, cuboidal epithelium. So whatever classification we are doing, we are doing on the basis of the cells on the upper layer, like this one. Since these cells are flat, so straight away this is squamous epithelium. Which epithelium? Squamous epithelium. Fine. So let's get started with the classification part. First, we'll talk about the classification of uh, stratified. In stratified, first we'll be doing the squamous. In squamous, we have two categories. One is keratinized. Another is non-keratinized. Another is non-keratinized. The only difference is, as you can see in this diagram, this is squamous epithelium. If this squamous epithelium have a protein name, name as keratin protein on it, it will be a keratinized. What's a keratin protein? When the above layer of cell, they get damaged, they get dead and they start to secrete a protein known as keratin that get deposited on the upper layer of cell. So that particular, uh, that epithelium that becomes keratinized epithelium. Right. So straight away, the entire structure will be like this. The only difference between two epithelium will be in terms of keratin protein. So keratinized have keratin protein. And here keratin absent. So where do you find these epithelium? So this uh, keratinized one is present in the skin. What's the function of keratin protein here? The keratin protein uh, is basically present on the dead layer and this will act as, uh, uh, it will act as a protective layer because it will, uh, uh, you know, protect the body or the skin from aberrations. And second, this will also make the skin waterproof. This will make the skin waterproof. So keratin is present on dead layer. On dead layer of cells. What's the function? One is protection and second it will make it waterproof. Just try to do one thing. Put a drop of water on your hand and you will see the drop of water will lie on the hand only. Why? Because your skin have uh, this keratin and that makes it waterproof. Then we have non-keratinized. It's present in buccal cavity. What is buccal cavity? The area inside the mouth. Okay. Buccal cavity. It's present in pharynx. It's present in your conjunctiva. Conjunctiva is uh, the layer in the eye. It's present in cornea. Cornea is also the present. It is present in eye. Vagina. Yes, it's also present in the vagina. So these are all the locations of non-keratinized squamous stratified epithelium. Let's talk about the transitional compound epithelium. Let's talk about the transitional compound. If I'm talking about the cuboidal, ciliated, columna, you don't have to go in much detail about them. So we'll be discussing about the transitional straight away. So transitional is that epithelium where cells can change the shape. Cells can change the shape. How? Let's see. For example, this is a layer of cells in the transitional. This particular epithelium is usually present in all those organs which, uh, which tend to store things. For example, urinary bladder. So urinary bladder, it stores urine. So whenever urine comes, the wall will stretch. So they are present on those spaces where the wall needs or have a function of stretching. Right. So whenever it stretch, the cells will change their shape. For example, before stretching, they were like this. After stretching, they become flat and because they are stretching, you will barely see a basement membrane. But here you can see the basement membrane. So here after stretching. So we say that the cells, they change the shape after stretching. So where do you find this epithelium? You find this epithelium in renal calluses, renal pelvis, ureters, urinary bladder and urethra 
as you can see this is present in the entire urinary system so you also call this epithelium as urothelium what do you call this epithelium you also call it as urothelium now what are all these structures so if i have done the chapter excretory system you must uh, be knowing all these if not let me just tell you if this is a section of kidney in the kidney are present these small pyramid like structures where the structural and functional unit nephron is present and then are present these ducts which are calyces and this area is renal pelvis and renal pelvis open into the structure known as ureter ureter open into urinary bladder so in all these these are related with the urinary system that's why you call it as urothelium all right that's about the uh, epithelial tissue let's read this ncrt paragraph compound epithelium is made of more than one layer that is multi layer of cells and thus has a limited role in secretion and absorption because it has a main role to perform in the protection so that that is why it does not perform any role in the secretion and absorption their main function is to provide protection against chemical and mechanical stress right i have i have told you abrasion for example you applied a cream or uh, anything else uh, it uh, you know drop down on your skin so chemical and mechanical stress they cover the dry surface of the skin they are present in skin buccal cavity pharynx and inner lining of ducts of salivary gland and of pancreatic duct now let me tell you the examples of the others left so we have done the classification here but we don't need to do all these in detail so where are all these present right so this cuboidal which is a compound one it is present in the larger ducts larger ducts of salivary and pancreas salivary gland and pancreas the smaller ducts the smaller ducts the smaller ducts which one of the saliva it's a library gland and pancreas had simple cuboidal because smaller they are not that big so they have a simple epithelium whereas the larger they are big they need lot of layers so they will be having the compound uh, the compo compound cubular uh, cuboidal epithelium right whereas this columnar and colum uh, columnar epithelium where are they present the columnar is present in the epiglottis and in the male urethra whereas this columnar ciliated it is present in your larynx where it is present in the larynx fine so these are example the most important example that you need to learn is one this cuboidal one second is your skin okay i'll put a star on everything that's important so that's my thing okay so you, you need to understand about your teacher now so in the skin and here in the pharynx so that's the most important things all right let's move further and solve a question which of the following uh, is the function of compound epithelium diffusion secretion protection absorption very simple compound is multi layer so it will provide the function of protection so answer to this question will be all right let's move further and talk about glands till then i'll have a sip of water because i am feeling very thirsty allow me all right you know uh, we, when we teachers you, we used to take classes we we speak a lot you know we speak a lot and how uh, you know our throat they are completely dry completely dry i tell you so anyways i have had my water so i'm fine now <laughs> so let's talk about glands now what are glands glands are certain cells that secrete something they're producing something whenever the word secretion comes that means the cells they are producing something okay now some cuboidal or columnar cells they get specialized they get specialized and they started producing something so hence they are known as glands so since we are talking about cells it can be a single cell it can be multicellular organ as well so single cell can also be a gland and a multicellular uh, cluster of cells forming an organ can also be a gland right so what technically are glands are they are modified columnar or cuboidal cells fine so for example uh, one structure is this second is this okay so in this structure you can see that there are certain cells present like this these cells are unicellular glands they if you it's not clear let me show you 
they are in the shape of an a glass which glass wine glass so you call these cells as goblet cell which cells goblet cell goblet cells they are mucus cell they produce mucus what do they produce they produce mucus and these cells they are a kind of unicellular gland because these are single cells these are single cell and producing something whereas this is an entire multicellular gland so this will contain a lot of cells for example in multicellular glands what example that we have any any n number of glands are there for example salivary gland for example pancreas for example your gastric glands all these are multicellular glands so glands they are what these are nothing these are modified cells which are secreting something a single cell can also be known as a gland and multicellular organ can also be a gland okay all right let's talk about the various types of glands so let's talk about the classification of glands now multicellular glands now multicellular glands how they're coming out from their gland according to that we have uh, three types of glands okay listen to me very carefully for example this is a gland and this is where it goes to or this is uh, where it needs to send its secretion so how it is going to send its secretion out of this gland so there are two ways one either it has a duct that will directly push things things out like it has certain pipes or if it does not have this pipe or a duct it can also secrete its secretion first into the body fluid that's blood and from blood it can go to the organ where it wants to go so according to according to how it pours its secretion how glands pours its secretion we have three we have three types of glands okay listen to me very carefully one is your exocrine gland second we have endocrine gland and third we have heterocrine gland so we have three types of gland according to how secretions are poured in the exocrine glands for example if this is a gland we have these pipe known as duct so here ducts are present ducts are present so what's the example here like your oil gland the another name of oil gland is sebaceous gland what's its name sebaceous gland and here the uh, salivary gland in fact sweat gland they all are the example of your exocrine glands that means they have duct from duct their secretions will be pour out like this then we have endocrine glands in endocrine we do not have duct so they are ductless gland they are ductless gland here the glands they are absent so uh, how they're going to pour its secretion for example this is a gland and this is a blood vessel so from here they will secrete something it will go to the blood so here we have blood so the secretions are known as hormones so we have n number of endocrine glands in our body like we have thyroid gland which gland thyroid gland now what about heterocrine glands heterocrine glands are also known as composite glands these glands have two portion one is exocrine and another is endocrine it has two portion one is exocrine and another is endocrine portion right now this exocrine and endocrine portion how they are different or uh, how uh, one gland have two portion let me just give you an example pancreas in pancreas we have two portion one which has duct which has duct and another which is ductless so the ductless is producing hormone like insulin whereas the one which have duct it's producing pancreatic digestive enzymes you heard it right so we have two examples here one is pancreas in pancreas the exocrine portion produces enzymes where has the endocrine portion produces hormones let's talk about another organ that is gonads we have two types of gonads 
in males we have testes in females we have ovaries so how they are heterocrine they also have endo and uh, exocrine part you must have heard of that yes we produces hormones like in males androgen so endocrine part produces hormones like in males androgen in females estrogen and progesterone whereas the exocrine portion is the gamete formation like we have done uh, the ova it travels through fallopian tube so tube is a duct Tube is a duct, fallopian tube is a duct, so that's the exocrine portion. So there are three kinds of glands, how the secretions are poured to the outside, exocrine, endocrine and heterocrine. Alright, let's move further and uh, let's solve this one. Which of the following is a ductless gland? Ear wax, salivary, thyroid and intestinal. Very simple, very simple. These are exocrine digestive ones. Ear wax is a kind of oil gland present in the ear. And salivary glands, it's also associated with that, whereas this is only an endocrine gland. So, answer is 3. Very simple, I guess. All right. Moving further to the cell junction. Now, what are cell junction? The cell junctions are the point of communication between two cells. For example, two cells are present like this. So, can these cells live away from each other without talking too much? No, it's practically impossible. So these cells will talk to each other. They have to talk to each other. Otherwise, they will not be able to, you know, perform a lot of function. For example, we are living, uh, we are neighbors and we are living together. So can we live without talking to each other? No, it's practically impossible. Just like that. Cells also have a point of communication and you call it as cell junction. So these are the point of communication. Point of communication between two cells okay for example here we have uh, one cell and here we have another cell okay for example uh, here we have certain proteins okay here we have certain proteins and these proteins are creating a tunnel okay so now you can see the component from this cell can move to this cell easily. Yes. So, this is one type of a cell junction. Okay. So, we have three types of cell junction. One is a tight junction. Another is an adhering junction. And third is a gap junction. So, gap junction is the one which I have drawn here. The gap junction is the one which will allow the passage of substances from here and there. Okay, so it will allow the continuity of cytoplasm as well. Big molecules, small molecules, they can easily pass through them, right? Whereas tight junction is usually present at this surface, it is formed by the fusion of plasma membrane of both the cells. So it's kind of a tight. Its function is not to send the compositions or not to send the components from one cell to the another. This is allowing the cell uh, components to move through. This is not allowing the cell components to move through. So tight junction is the one. This was the gap junction. This is the tight one. This will not allow the substances to pass through. Whereas we have then the third one. The function of third one is to bind two cells together. And it has a lot of proteins associated with them, like this. So, it's like uh, we have uh, two, for example, you have two toys, okay. And I ask one, uh, uh, one student to uh, remain inside the room and other to move outside the room. So, for example, one person is uh, present on either side of the wall. And you started hitting the wall like this, okay. So, other will also get to hear, yes, someone is asking me something. And then it will also keep on hitting the things like that, right. So, this is how both, uh, both they are uh, communicating with each other. Also, they are also bound to each other via all those components. So, for example, I attach those students with the wall. I fix them with the wall, right. For example, if this is a wall, one student ha uh, has to bind here, another they has to bind here. So, definitely they are adhering two walls together. So, that's why the, the name of this junction is adhering junction. So, it's like it is a cement. It's like it's a cement between the wall. It is a cement between the wall. So, it is performing the function of cementing. And this will allow substances. And it will not allow substances. Okay. 
one such uh, example in the adhering junction is the desmosome desmosome is one of the example of the adhering junction so for example it has this cement you call it as plaque the cement is known as plaque and these are protein fibers these are protein fibers so let's read the ncrt lines because you know the kind of question that is asked from this topic is on the definition or the explanation of this junctions let's see all cells in epithelium are held together with little intercellular material in nearly all animal tissue specialized junction provide both structural and functional links between its individual cells three types of cell junctions are found in the epithelium and other tissues these are called tight adhering and gap okay now from here the uh, the most interesting thing from where the questions are asked it it starts so please uh, focus here tight junction helps to stop substances from leaking across a tissue so it will not allow the substances to pass through adhering junction performs cementing to keep neighboring cells together so their function is to keep the things together and gap junction facilitates the cell to communicate with each other by connecting the cytoplasm of adjoining cells for rapid transfer of ions small molecule and sometimes big molecules so this is what three junctions are and the function they perform let's solve some uh, questions previous year questions now they are going to start from here match the following cell structure with its characteristic features select correct option from the following so a tight junction so what does tight junction does we have to find it here it will not allow these uh, leakage of substances so for a we have three establish a barrier for pre to prevent leakage of fluids across, ep across epithelial cell adhering you just need to find cement word okay so cement the neighboring cells together gap junction cytoplasmic channels to facilitate communication so for c we have four and d synaptic junction transmit information through chemical to one another synapses will be doing in the neuron while nervous tissue so do not worry about that so what's the answer a3 b1 c4 d2 answer is four next which type of tissue correctly match with its location cuboidal lining of stomach no smooth muscle wall of intestine areolar tendon okay so that's a question that we need to do it later because we have not done the muscle part okay so leave it next the function of the gap junction is to stop substances that's a function of tight junction perform cementing that's a function of adhering cement one wherever the word cement comes that's adhering facilitate communication between adjoining cell by connecting the cytoplasm very true for rapid transfer of ion and molecules separate two cell no the cell junction perform a function to connect the cells not to separate the cells so answer is three next choose a correctly match pair tendon specialized connective adipose dense okay so we have not done this as well so let's leave it here do this one choose the correctly matched pair inner lining of salivary duct is ciliated no the inner lining of salivary duct has cuboidal epithelium moist surface of buccal cavity as glandular it has squamous non keratinized tubular part of nephron yes it has the cuboidal what that tubular part is pct proximal convoluted tubule tubular inner surface of bronchioles it has ciliated so answer is 3 next The ciliated epithelium cells are required to move particles or mucus in a specific direction. In human, these cells are mainly present in. So basically, the question is asking where does the ciliated epithelium is present? It is present in bronchioles and fallopian tubes. So answer is four. So what you guys have to do is how you will be solving question along with me. When I just start the question, for example, I started question here. You will pause the video. you will read the question you will solve the question now you will play the video and you will see what ma'am is telling you okay now the ciliated columnar epithelium in humans are known to occur in again same type of a question with different language bronchioles and fallopian tube answer is d next the cell lining the blood vessel belong to the category of very simple blood vessel has to move substances there should be diffusion so answer is squamous answer is 4 next next we are going to start with the connective tissue so let's get started 
So let's get started with the connective tissue. So as its name suggests, connective, it will connect things. It will connect things. So as the name suggests connective, it will connect or pack. Or what does it do? It will pack. So out of all the tissues, which is the issue, uh, which <laughs> not the issue, <laughs> tissue, which is the tissue which is most abundant in our body and that is our connective tissue. It is most abundant and you will see it almost everywhere. Most abundant and widely distributed that means you will find it almost everywhere most abundant and widely distributed the main function of this organ as it's uh, it's of the tissue as its name suggests it is a connective tissue that means it will be connecting the things it will be connecting the organs so it will pack the organs it will pack the organs or tissues how let's see for example if you have your muscles right and muscles need to be packed together so for packing we have a tissue known as connective tissue or you can see beneath the epithelial cells is also present your connective tissue so connective tissue so it's quite 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 very important uh, and uh, as i've told you the epithelial tissue it always has a free surface for example it is epithelial tissue and above that it's all free nothing is lie above it but it never has a free surface why because below the connective tissue are present your muscles and above the connective tissue are present your epithelial cell. So this epithelial tissue, it never has a free surface. Never have or has a free surface. Second important thing, as I've told you, the epithelial tissue is avascular. So it was taking the nutrient from the blood vessels of connective tissue. So this one is vascular. That means it has blood supply it has blood supply all right so uh, that's the introduction of connective tissue let's talk about what are the various types of your connective tissue but before that let's uh, read this one but i think that will make only sense if you know the cl classification and basics of it are you started or uh, so it will be having the blood supply now what are the various uh, parts what the connective tissue is made up of let's see so connective tissue is made up of three things one are your cells second are the fibers what are fibers fibers are the thread like structures and wherever they are present they usually perform the function of support and third is the matrix or ground substance for example we have a gel like we have a gel-like or fluid matrix in that your cells are dissolved along with the fibers. For example, you have, a, uh, you have a glass of milk and in milk I add some gems and some you know candies which are like fibers. So it's your connective tissue. Yes, yeah, so this is how it looks like. So imagine that milk is a little solidified like a jelly. So usually that ground substance, it's gel-like. Why it is gel like? Because it is made up of some glycoproteins known as mucopolysaccharides. Mucopolysaccharides are what? These are glycoproteins. Now, what are glycoproteins? The proteins which have carbohydrate with it. So, in glycoprotein, we have a category known as mucopolysaccharide. And mucopolysaccharide is a category which have mucus. What does it have? Mucus, or it is a slimy mucus like. Okay, let me give you an example. Have you seen aloe vera? Or aloe vera gel that we apply on face nowadays uh, that is a mucopolysaccharide because it's slimy or you must have uh, uh, seen lady finger in lady finger or okra when you cut it you will see or ask your mother uh, it, it has some slimy secretions in it and that slimy secretion is what it's your mucopolysaccharide okay now what are the various cells and fibers let's talk about them now if I talk about the cells okay if I talk about the cells, so what are the various cells that we have? The first type of a cell that we have is your fibroblast. Okay, first of all, let's, uh, let's get introduced with the name of the various cells present in the connective tissue. Second cell that we have is adipose cells. Adipose cell. Third we have is the mast cell. Fourth we have is the histiocyte all these are the cells present here fifth we have is the plasma cell 
Now you must be thinking, ma'am, so much cells. Yes, areolar tissue is performing a function of packaging and it's around everywhere. So you, we need a lot of number of cells here. Okay, so first type of a cell is a fibroblast. As its name suggests, it secretes fibers. It secretes fibers. So this is how it looks like. Right? And this is your fibroblast. It is secreting your fibers in the connective tissue. Next, we have adipose cell or the fat cell. Or the fat cell, as its name suggests, it will stores fat. Mast cell. What about mast cell? Mast cell is a type of a cell which is exactly like basophil of your blood. Basophil is a type of WBC. So, mast cell have granules and it secretes three components. Histamine, serotonin and heparin. And they have a major role in inflammation. In what inflammation? For example, when a mosquito bites to you, at that time these mast cells, they secrete histamine, serotonin, heparin. As a result, that area appears red and that reaction is known as inflammation. Okay, so here the histamine is a vasodilator. What is a vasodilator? Vaso, I know now you all know what is a vaso means. Vaso means blood vessel. So it will dilate the blood vessel. Serotonin, it is a vasoconstrictor. And heparin is anticoagulant. Is anticoagulant. Okay. Now, what about histiocytes? Histiocytes are like macrophages. Ma'am, what is a macrophage? We don't know about macrophage. No problem. You must have uh, heard of WBC. Yeah. And some, they are, uh, some cells, immune cells, they have a property of engulfing the microbes. Yes, they have a property of engulfing microbes. How? If this is a microbe, they will take the microbe like this, like this, and they will eat it. Right? So, this is a property of uh, uh, phagocytosis. You, what you call it as phagocytosis. So, histiocytes are like macrophages. So, if ever any microbes comes in your tissue, they will eat it. They perform a function of phagocytosis. What is phagocytosis, my dear students? It engulf the microbes. It engulf the microbes fine then we have plasma cells the plasma cells they are like b cells now ma'am what are b cells we also don't know about b cell no problem b cells are like wbc they are lymphocyte they are b lymphocyte and they secrete antibodies what do they secrete they secrete antibodies now why do we need antibodies here because if the mosquito was biting to you and their inflammation occurs that means it is coming in contact with your connective tissue so if it is coming in contact with the connective tissue so that means yes we need something there microbes can enter from that point right so that's why nature has given you so much defense system in the connective tissue itself so that's or these are the various cells in the connective tissue and and it's quite important don't take it lightly my dear friends or my dear students okay students are like friends only na? students are like friends only if i i'll consider you as my friend so that will be a better relationship okay so let's move further and talk about the fibers so there are three types of fibers in your connective tissue see guys i'm giving you a lot a lot of a lot of you know concepts and uh, data and everything i'm giving you a lot of it i i'm trying to give you everything uh, you know which is very much important from need point of view so the only thing that i want from you guys is please do not take these lectures lightly. We all teachers are doing so much, so much for you guys. We are giving a hundred percent and uh, I, I don't think so. That's uh, uh, no, nobody's uh, like, uh, nobody's thinking like it's just a lecture. They're thinking a lot of students are watching it and we want them to study very, very, very hard. So just do not think it's free. It's like that. It will be lacking this and that. Don't take things in the mind. If even if you try, you can try just watch a lecture and try to solve PYQs, previous year questions of need. 
you can see the results all right anyway so let's talk about three types of fibers collagen elastic and reticular there are three types of fibers present okay so as you can see here if this is a connective tissue this is a ground substance on which these cells are present and here are present these thread like fibers so first type of fiber are collagen they are white color fibers as you can see made up of collagen protein so twice the question has been asked twice the question has been asked which is the most abundant protein in animals most abundant proteins in animals and that's your collagen protein which protein collagen protein okay Elastic is made up of elastin fibers, whereas reticular is made up of collagen or reticulin fibers. The color of collagen is yellow, whereas reticulin is made up of white. Now you must be thinking, ma'am, if it is made up of collagen fibers, why don't you keep it in the category of collagen? They are broken collagen fibers. Collagen fibers are very thick fibers and they are generally present in bundles like this. Sometime from here, small pieces, they break down and they form reticular fibers. Next, we have where are they present or how they are present. They are very non-elastic. They are elastic. They are delicate. And uh, uh, you know how, how they are present. They are present in the form of bundles. They are present single. They are present singly. I think that's a kind of a switch. So you just mark it here, occurrence. How are they present? They are present in bundles. They are single. They are also single. Where are the elasticity? If I talk about elasticity of them, they are non-elastic. That means if you stretch them, they will not stretch like the elastic. Because they are very, you say, they are in bundles and they are very thick. Whereas this one is elastic. This is very delicate. It's very fragile. Even if something happens, it will break. This one is unbranched. As I Have I drawn any branching? No. This one is branched. It is single and branched like this. This one is also branched. It is present in bone and cartilage. That's why the bone and, bone and cartilage, they are very, very strong. This is present in blood vessel. This is present in your liver. Yes, liver and in fact spleen. So these are the various organs where you have different various fibers are more in abundance. It's not like uh, in, uh, in the blood vessel there is no collagen fiber. No, 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 no. Collagen fibers are also present in blood vessel. We are just talking about abundance because they all are present in your connective tissue. All right, that's about the fibers. Let's talk about the classification part. What are the various types of uh, connective tissue that we have? So let's get started. Connective tissue. So the first we have a loose connective tissue, second we have dense connective tissue and the third one we have specialized. Okay, let's talk about it. First one we have is a loose connective tissue. So it, as its name suggests, everything is very loosely packed, everything is scattered. In the dense one, everything is so densely packed, it is so densely packed that means uh, the things are abundant and they are dense whereas in specialized they are performing certain special functions so in the category of loose connective tissue we have areola and adipose whereas in the dense we have the dense regular and dense irregular dense regular and dense irregular Whereas in the specialized connective tissue, we have two types of spe uh, specialized. One is skeletal, also known as endoskeleton or supportive. Or supportive. Whereas another category of specialized is your fluid connective tissue. Yes, fluid connective tissue. So, uh, let's talk about them in detail. In the loose, the things are loosely packed. In the dense, it's densely packed. In specialists, are performing special function. In skeletal, we have uh, cartilage and bone. Whereas in the fluid, we have blood and lymph. In fluid, we have blood and lymph right so fluid connect connective tissue is the one connective tissue in which your cell that ground substance is quite liquid it is not even gel like so here in the fluid one the ground substance is fluid that's why it is a fluid connective tissue 
And second thing here, no fibers. That means the fibers are absent. Have you seen any fibers in blood so far? You must have done the basics of blood, but no, we don't see any fibers there. So here the fibers are absent. Fine. And the uh, fluid connective tissue, do not worry, we'll be doing in detail in body fluids and circulation. So other things we'll be doing in the detail in this chapter. So let's get started with the areolar connective tissue. So you must have seen this diagram. This is quite important. So I'm putting a star on it because sometimes they give this diagram and they give you labelings in form of A, B, C, D. You have to identify and give the answer. So if I talk about the areolar connective tissue, it contains all the fibers and cells. So whatever fibers we have discussed and whatever cells we have discussed, it will be containing all of them. Okay. And where do you find the loose connective tissue? You'll find it beneath the skin. Beneath the skin and around organs. Vital organ. What are vital organs? Important organs. So it will be packing various uh, organs or uh, some other organs also like muscles, nerves. It will be packing all of these organs. So as you can see here, there is a cell present fibroblast. From here is emerging out fibers. Okay. And then you have these fibers. These are, uh, these are your reticular fibers. These blue one are your collagen fiber and these yellow one are your elastic fibers. Let's talk about cells. You can see here the cells which are macrophage, macrophage, histiocyte. So the macrophage of tissues are known as histiocyte. Okay. So histiocyte comes from histose. Histose means tissues. Okay. Then we have here mast cell that secretes histamine, serotonin, and heparin. And then also we have other cells here, like uh, you can see here adipose cells. Now you must be thinking, ma'am, adipose tissue is different, but why they have drawn adipose cells here? I'm here. I'll let you know. Don't worry. Okay. So let's then start with the adipose. So adipose tissue is a tissue which has a lot of cells known as cluster of fat cells fat cells. So it is storing fat. As you can see here, in this entire area is fat. So because fat globules or molecules are so big that the nucleus it gets side to the uh, at one side, right? For example, if you have a room, in room I put a big ball, right? So you will be sitting at the one corner, right? On one corner. Just like that uh, it happens with nucleus. So nucleus has to go to an, a corner because the fat is containing the maximum part of the cell. So if you'll see, you'll, uh, you'll, you'll, you must be thinking it appears like a ring. It appears like a ring, signet ring. So that's why the fat cells, they are also known as signet ring cells. What is the signet ring cells? Signet ring is a ring which have a gem on it. Signet ring cell. Right? Now, what's the function of fat in you, first of all? Yes, I know, fat cells, they perform a function of storage of fat. But what's the function of fat in your body? Let's see. What are the role, role a fat perform? First, insulation. Second, shock absorption. And third one, yes, third one is energy. Third one is energy. So insulation means if you have a covering of fat on your body, if heat is coming, it will not allow heat to move out. Second, we have shock absorption. If someone punches you hard because you have fat in your body, the organs will not be damaged. And third, it will break down to give you energy. Yes, like carbohydrate break to give you energy, just like that fat breaks up to give you energy. So they are the cluster of fat cell or the signet ring cells. All right. So the adipose connective tissue, where it is present, or where do you find it? You find it beneath the skin, just with the areolar connective tissue. That's why you you must, if you have seen this diagram here, you can see this. Uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> these layer uh, or these uh, cluster of cells known as adipose tissues. Okay, all right. Otherwise, it is present around the vital organs. Now, why do we need a fat layer around vital organs? For example, 
uh, as I've told you, it has a function that it performs of shock absorption. So if it has around vital organs, it will be protecting uh, the vital organs uh, from any, uh, you know, if someone like fells off you, if some you punch someone hard, just like that. Okay, so it will not damage the organ, rather it will uh, protect the organ. Otherwise, it is also present in the, uh, you know, all, uh, all those animals uh, which are mammals, but they live in certain conditions which is very cold, like in cold water or cold condition, like polar bear or like your whale. So they have a fat of skin known as blubber and that blubber, it helps in, uh, it helps in insulation and hence these organisms, they can also maintain their body temperature. We say that mammals have a fixed body temperature, they're warm blooded. So, but mammals who are living in cold condition, how they're managing or how they're maintaining their temperature by having this fat layer, which also gives energy, produces heat and also it performs a function of insulation. So, fat, is present in the form of blubber in whale and polar bear. Okay, so see how fat is so much important. Uh, we are just, you know, uh, the people used to say, oh, fat people are not good or, you know, they, these kind of uh, norms, they say, oh, you are so fat. You know, sometimes even on uh, my social media, some people used to write comments that I am fat. See, if so fat is so good, I think they should get educated, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, yeah, excessive is so bad. Don't be obese, but that's fine, you know. <laughs> All right. So, let's talk about adipose. Uh, let's talk about the cartilage now. Uh, but before cartilage, I think we should discuss the dense connective tissue first. Let's discuss the dense connective tissue first. Okay. So, what about the dense connective tissue? So dense means something is densely packed. There are a number of things present. So dense connective tissue have a lot of fibers in them. What do they have? A lot of fibers. So here number of fibers are present. Number of fibers are present. Number of fibers are present. And they are compactly packed. Compactly packed. Tightly packed. Densely. Densely or compactly packed. Okay. Let's see how. So dense, regular and irregular are of two types. They are like two brothers and sisters. So also if you have uh, your brother or system, out of one, one child is always organized. Another is like me, <laughs> who is less organized. No, in some things I'm organized. But if it in terms of my Almira and clothes, I am very poor, I tell you. If in terms of it is like my office thing, my studio and my books, I'm very much organized. In my kitchen, I'm organized. But if you'll see my clothes and my Almira sometimes, some part, it will be like scattered somewhere here and there and here. I'm not able to manage it because I always wear only one t-shirt for the entire day and that's this one which you are just looking at right now, right? So that's why I don't give time to all those things which are not that important. So just like that, if it's me, I am a kind of irregular. So you'll see the fibers, they're quietly scattered, right? And here you will see the fibers, they are present in a manner, they're present in a parallel fashion. Like if I say, if I'm drawing in this box, the dense regular connective tissue, I will find the fibers present in this manner. The cells quantity is very less in these type of connective tissue, but fibers, they're present in the, in this fashion, in this fashion regular one like this okay whereas in the irregular you will find out that the fibers they are present in a random fashion like this okay just like my almira now you will never forget this concept <laughs> so here uh, the fibers are present fibers are present in parallel fashion in parallel fashion okay and here, random arrangement of fibers. Random arrangement of fibers. All right, boys and girls, what about the regular one? Where, where it is present? The regular one is present in your tendon and ligament. Now, what are these? Yes, these are dense regular connective tissue. Tendon is a connective tissue that joins your muscle with the bone, whereas ligament joins your bone to bone. Bone with bone. And this one joins your muscle 
to bone. All right, you just can't uh, keep all the tissues and organs lying like this. You want them to be connected so that they should remain remain at one place. So you must have heard some uh, someone get fallen off or someone's you know foot gets twisted and they broke their ligament. Have you heard of it? No. Okay. So this occurs when if I say if this is bone, one bone, this is another. These are joined to each other by a dense regular connective tissue. And that strands of dense connective tissue, they are known as ligaments. Fine. So that's about the dense connective tissue. Let's talk about your lovely cartilage. What's a cartilage? So first of all, cartilage is again a specialized connective tissue. This is as comparison to bone. Both are present in the skeleton part. But as comparison to bone, this is quite soft. Let me give you a proof. Now close your eyes. Yes, everyone, please close your eyes. Touch your nose and bend it like this. Can you bend it? Yes. Now take a bone. Can you bend your bone? I can't do it. I can just move it around the joints, but I can't bend my bone. So as comparison to the bone, the cartilage is quite soft and pliable. Soft and pliable as comparison to bone. To bone. But as comparison to other tissue, it is little hard. So that's why in NCR it is also little, it is also written hard but pliable. But as comparison to bone, it is soft and pliable. Pliable means you can just bend it the way you want. It also contains collagen fibers, but less than the bone. Second thing, what are the cells that are present in your uh, Cartilage. So the cells present in cartilage are chondroblast and chondrocyte and chondrocyte. Another important thing to note here is that it is that connective tissue, it's an exception that it does not have blood supply. It is avascular. So this is one exception. It is avascular. Okay. So let's uh, see how does it looks like. So outside you will see a layer of chondroblast cells which are new cell. Whenever the word blast is used, blast is usually used for immature cell. Where a site word is used for mature cell. Wherever the word site will come, you, 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 you yourself will assume that they are differentiated cells. Okay. Now these cells, they are chondroblast. What are these chondroblast? Beneath this is present your entire ground substance with collagen fiber and protein. Yes, a special protein is present. So this is the matrix or ground substance. This matrix contain collagen fibers and chondrin protein. Which protein? Chondrin protein. So chondro word is always associated with cartilage. With what it is associated? With cartilage. And now here are present your chondrocyte. So chondrocytes can be present singly or mingly, double, couples. They can be couples or they can be like you, single. And they are present in empty spaces or these fluid filled spaces. These are known as lacunae. What are these? Lacunae. So these cells are present in the fluid filled spaces. What do you call it as? Lacunae. They are never present as such. They will present in spaces. So lacunae are fluid filled spaces. That contain cells. That contain cells. Okay. So what are these cells? Chondrocyte. Chondrocyte. Now where do you find the cartilage? One example I have given you here. So here we have the cartilage on the tip of the nose. Tip of the nose. We have uh, the cartilage also in the epiglottis. We also have the cartilage in our intervertebral disc. Intervertebral disc. And we also have a cartilage towards our ribs. So these are the example of cartilage. Let's talk about the various types of cartilage. So I am teaching you types of cartilage here because they will be, you know, uh, they, they will be apl applied in the chapter locomotion and movement. Okay, so I think you all are with me. So, okay. So let's talk about the types of cartilage. Types of cartilage. 
the first type that we have is a hyaline cartilage second category have is fibrous and third is calcified in fibrous because we have two types of fibers one are collagen another are elastic and collagen are white in color and elastic are yellow in color so we have two types of cartilage white fibrous and yellow elastic so this is important from neat point of view so please pay attention here okay all right now in the first one that is hyaline in the first one that is hyaline hyaline is a very fragile and transparent it's like a glass where do you find it you find it in the articular cartilage articular is a cartilage that is present between bones or in the joints then we have costal cartilage costal cartilage is a cartilage present in the ribs present in the ribs also in the larynx we have in the larynx we have the hyaline cartilage and the last your tracheal rings now you must be thinking ma'am this is so much first of all you will think it is so much because this is an entire chapter so it's quite obvious fine just give a break to your brain okay and second thing i always have tricks so why to worry in hyaline we have al and you will find al in every cartilage here quite good na <laughs> okay then we have white fibrous and white fibrous it is present in intervertebral disc so you know what is vertebrae and pubic symphysis oh my god ma'am so dangerous names no problem intervertebral disc is present between two vertebrae now what are vertebrae if this is your vertebral column and vertebral column is made up of these small bones and these small bones they are known as vertebrae vertebra 1 2 3 in between two vertebra are present these disc which are made up of cartilage now pubic symphysis it is present between two hips two hip bone how many hips do you have two na everyone have two hips yeah come on so between these two in the ventral surface that means at the front you have a section known as pubic symphysis this is nothing but a white fibrous cartilage okay then yellow elastic e for elastic e for epiglottis e for ostachian tube ostachian tube and also here tip of the nose is very important so usually here e e e but one is different tip of the nose next calcified it is not present in us it is present in frog so here this was a cartilage earlier and then it becomes calcified so you don't have nothing to do with that usually these are asked in the exam okay all right next we have is a bone okay bone is very important so bone is hard and non pliable why it is hard and non pliable because it has calcium salts calcium salts which calcium salts calcium phosphate is most abundant and calcium carbonate but the most abundant is calcium phosphate calcium carbonate is very few it's like very few okay but calcium phosphate is the main calcium salt of your bone okay so if you have seen bone have you seen bone you have never seen bone in the cartoons yaar come on i have even seen in the cartoons <laughs> so anyway anyways just jokes apart so if you see the bone it's white in color why because calcium usually wherever the calcium is there it gives white color second thing like cartilage also have collagen fibers but bone have more collagen fibers so here collagen fibers are abundant that's why it is very strong so now you must be thinking ma'am how to make our bone strong have a lot of calcium second thing have vitamin c because vitamin c leads to the formation of collagen fibers if you have more vitamin c in your body you will have more collagen fibers your blood vessels will be fine your bones will be fine and your skin will be very glowing yes because it's a part of your connective tissue beneath the skin areola connective tissue 
okay thank me later <laughs> all right so that's why you know nowadays if you'll see the advertisements on tv and so there are vitamin c serums and so much so right so all these things they are good they're very good for the skin okay anyways so collagen fibers are quite abundant like there was chondrin protein in the matrix here we have osin protein which protein? Austin protein in matrix. Like chondro word was used for cartilage. Here osteo word is used for bone. So what are the cells present in the bone? One are the immature cells, osteoblast. Another are the mature cells, osteocyte. And then we have osteoclast. Now what are osteoclast? Clast will do blast. Yes, clast will do blast. So these are bone destroying cells. Bone destroying cells. Now you must be thinking, ma'am, if they are destroying bones, why nature has given us this? See, sometimes when there is a drop of calcium in your blood, so what body does is, body will take some calcium from the bone. So for that, we need to erode some bone substance so for that we need osteoclast so osteoclast are bone destroying cell they are formed by the fusion of monocyte formed by the fusion of monocyte formed by the fusion of monocyte i hope that's pretty clear to everyone my dear students my lovely students all right now if you'll see ever see the structure of bone it looks like this inside the bone are present bone marrow for example, here we have red bone marrow and here we have yellow bone marrow. Okay, there are two types of tissues present in them. Yellow bone marrow is made up of fat. Whereas red bone marrow is very important. Why? Let's see. Red bone marrow is the site of hemopoiesis. What is hemopoiesis? Formation of blood. It's site of hemopoiesis. Hemopoiesis is formation of blood. So your blood and blood cells are formed here. Your blood cells are formed here in your red bone marrow. See, yes. So yes, it is vascular blood uh, these bones, they are vascular. Do not confuse that they are made up of calcium salt, so they will be vascular. No, 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 no. They are vascular. They have a blood supply in them. That's why whenever there is accident and the fracture occurs, there is a breakage of bone, then the blood supplies it oozes out, right? Okay, anyways, another thing. Now, how these cells are present? So, if this is one osteocyte, imagine this is one osteocyte. Just like cartilage, they are also present in these spaces, fluid filled spaces. What these spaces are known as? These are known as lacunae. So, what are these lacunae? So, lacunae, which are fluid filled spaces, they are present in both cartilage and in the bone because both are present there. Okay, so both are lying in the, these fluid filled spaces. Now, one interesting thing to note here is that all these osteocytes, they are attached to each other with the help of their these connections. They have these arms. Okay. If you can see, all the osteocytes with the help of their arms, they are attached to each other. And they are forming ring-like structure. And these ring-like structures are known as lamellae. What you call them as? Lamellae. So, lamellae are rings. They are rings. And these rings are present in concentric fashion. How? Let's see. Like this. Like this. Okay. So, this is these all rings, they are lamellae and inside of them is present Haversian canal. What is present inside them? Haversian canal. Haversian canal is a canal through which blood vessel passes. From here, blood vessels passes. Okay. And this entire structure is a structural and functional unit of a bone and you call it as osteon. Osteon or Haversian system. So, osteon or Haversian system is made up of concentric limbs known as, uh, rings known as lamellae. Inside them is a canal known as Haversian canal. Fine. So, that's the structural and functional unit of your bone. That's about the bone. Let's move further and talk about the muscular tissue. So, let's get started with the muscular tissue. So, M for muscle, M for mesoderm. So, the origin is mesoderm. 
origin is mesoderm. So it is mesodermal in origin, right? So if I talk about the muscles, if I talk about the muscles, what are the property do muscles have, and what are they made up of? First of all, so they are made up of muscle fibers or muscle cells, made up of muscle fibers and muscle cells. Or muscle cells. So muscle fibers are sometimes also known as muscle cells. So what are the properties these cells have? First of all, you all know the muscle cells in contraction. So contraction word is always associated with the muscle. So first of all, they have a property of. Let's talk about their properties. They have a property of contractibility. That means contractibility. That means it can contract. Second property it has is of extensibility. Third, elasticity, and fourth, excitability. Let's talk about them in detail. So, extensibility that means it can extend like anything. Elasticity it can recoil back, right? And uh, excitability that it can respond to any electric current. In case of our body, you call it as nerve impulse you must have heard of the word nerve impulse that your uh, neurons it generates some electrical impulse so yes these muscles they can respond to these electrical impulse and yes they can also get excited like them like the neurons so that's a property of excitability so if i talk about the muscles so muscles are wrapped upon by some tissues known as connective tissue so if i talk about the first muscle there are three types of muscle one is the skeletal muscle another is a smooth muscle and third is a cardiac muscle so let's let me show you the diagram okay so there are three types of muscles skeletal smooth and cardiac muscle and their cells are different because they're different muscles okay properties are same excitability extensibility contractibility excitability but the cells are different and according to the cells according to the properties of the cell they are present in different locations so first type of a muscle is a skeletal muscle as you can see here Second is a smooth muscle and third is a cardiac muscle. So here I am not going to discuss you with anything. I am not going to reveal anything. But in the next sections we will be discussing about them. So let's get started with your skeletal muscle. First of all why it is known as a skeletal muscle and what other names a skeletal muscle have. So it is also known as a striped muscle. Striated muscle. Or voluntary muscle. Okay, so let's talk about why they are named like that. First of all, skeletal because it is attached to bones. It is known as striped and striated because it has striations or stripes. And voluntary, it is under our control, under our control. First of all, before dwelling into the cell and everything, let's talk about its outer structure. So, if I talk about skeletal muscle, it is, it is cylindrical in shape or the cells of the skeletal muscle, they are cylindrical. If I take the section of it, it will appear like this. It will appear like this. So, this entire muscle is wrapped upon by areolar connective tissue, right? So, outside this will be present areolar connective tissue like this. The name of this connective tissue which is present on the outer surface of the entire muscle is the epimyceum. So, I am drawing the transverse section of muscle, TS of muscle. What is TS? For example, if this is muscle, I am going to cut it in this way and show you like this. Inside them, what is made? what it is made up of? It is made up of muscle bundles or muscle fascicles like this. It is made up of muscle bundles or muscle fascicles. Each muscle bundle or fascicle is packed by like this or I can say all these muscle bundles they are packed with each other with the help of this connective tissue known as fascia so fascia is a connective tissue which is holding all the uh, muscle bundles together inside these muscle bundles are present muscle cells or muscle fibers inside them are present muscle fiber or 
cell. Right? Let's draw the structure of muscle fiber or cell. Are you ready? Okay. Next. So if you'll see the structure of muscle fiber or cell, as I've told you, these muscles, they are cylindrical in shape. They are cylindrical in shape. Okay, like this. These are cylindrical in shape and they have a special plasma membrane, which is not just plasma membrane here. That is known as sarcolemma. So their plasma membrane is known as sarcolemma. Inside of them are present modified smooth, smooth endoplasmic reticulum. These are sarcoplasmic, sarcoplasmic reticulum. So sarcoplasmic reticulum is reticulum is modified SCR, modified smooth endoplasmic reticulum that stores calcium ion. That stores calcium ion. Fine. Now Another point to note here is that since this is a muscle cell, this is a muscle cell, skeletal muscle cell. So definitely there is no cell without nucleus. Is there any cell without nucleus? No. So it will also be having nucleus, but there is a condition. Number of nucleus, many nuclei. But again a condition, all these nuclei will not be present in the center, but at periphery. What is peripheral position? For example, if you are sitting in a room, in that room you will find the nucleus on the walls or your roof or floor, but not in the center. Okay, so it is multinucleated. I am writing the characteristics here. Multinucleated with nucleus or nuclei at periphery at periphery multinucleated condition is also known as syncytial condition okay another what is the shape of the muscle fibers it is cylindrical in shape it has sarcolemma it has sarcolemma now another point to note here is that everyone please listen to me very carefully now here are present these invagination of sarcolemma invagination means something going inside and these are known as T-tubules. What are these known as? T-tubules. T means transverse. They are coming inside transversely. What is their function? Let's see. So inside the muscle is also present something. Mus inside muscle is present muscle bundle. Inside muscle bundle we have muscle fibers or cell. And inside muscle fibers we have myofibrils like this. These myofibrils... They contain alternatively light and dark bands like this. Alternative light and dark bands due to which your muscle is known as a striated muscle. So, these stripes are due to alternative light and dark bands. Alternative light and dark bands. Now, what these alternative light and dark bands they are made up of? We'll be talking about them very shortly. Right? So, what are these? This white one is light band and black one is dark band. So, dark and light band. Alternative. Okay? So, here, these light bands, I'm writing it here. Okay? These, okay, so where does everything goes? Okay, it's here. <laughs> so, light band is made up of a protein which is actin. Whereas the dark band is made up of a protein known as myosin. Because myosin is thicker, that why it's, that's why it looks very, uh, very dark. And uh, actin is very thin, that's why it looks very light in appearance. All these alternative light and dark bands have a structure in them like this, which is known as sarcomere. So here are present one structural and unit of a muscle known as sarcomere. Okay, so if someone asks you, does skeleton muscle have sarcomere? You will say, yes, sarcomere is present. And sarcomere is formed of nothing but alternative light and dark band. The structure of sarcomere will be doing in the locomotion and uh, movement chapter. Another thing to note here is that the skeletal muscle have abundant of myoglobin. Right? Myoglobin abundant. What is myoglobin? So, uh, just like myoglobin, you must have heard hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is a pigment in blood or in the RBC that carries oxygen. Just like that in muscles. Wherever word myo comes now, that means muscle. Just like that in muscles, we have myoglobin. So, it stores oxygen in muscles. 
right also glycogen is abundant why do we need glycogen because it is performing it is performing a lot of function and last very important point to note here is that the skeletal muscle it gets fatigue fatigue means get tired easily for example you are running and running and running and running and so much so much so much so much after some time you will get cramps in your legs if if it is your first time in the gym how do you or while you are running for after long time you are running you will get get cramps in your muscles or that is known as the muscle fatigue okay so this skeletal muscle gets fatigue okay let me write in this one skeletal muscle put a star on it it's important which muscle gets fatigue skeletal muscle skeletal muscle gets fatigue right what happened during fatigueness what happen is your lactic acid is formed whenever glucose breaks down in the absence of oxygen what is formed lactic acid so this lactic acid gets deposit in muscle deposit in muscle which lead to muscle cramps which leads to muscle cramps and this is why you get tired and you're not able to walk properly and later on this lactic acid gets dissolved okay uh, so where is your uh, skeletal muscle present one i have already told you it is present attached to bone okay so it will be present attached to bone like my biceps muscle yes second thing in my tongue as i've told you it's voluntary it's under our control so that means i'm talking and talking it's in my control so it's present in the tongue it's also present in your abdominal muscle which abdominal your this abdominal and back muscle while you are studying so much your back muscles oh my god gets fatigued now you see that move ad in move ad the female is like she does she got a cramp there right so these back muscle and these abdominal muscle these all are what these are skeletal but the muscles inside my abdomen they are smooth they are different i'm just talking about my body wall muscle which muscle body wall body wall muscle in esophagus upper one third is also skeletal upper one third of esophagus what is esophagus food pipe it is also skeletal all right so that's the location of your skeletal muscle let's talk about the smooth muscle you call smooth muscle as smooth okay but we have a question here uh huh i can just i can't leave you like this <laughs> you have to solve question in a skeletal muscle fiber the nuclei are diffuse centrally peripherally absent very simple straightforward question only if you have studied well it is present at peripheral location so this question is just on the location where the nuclei are present next smooth muscle okay now <laughs> let's get started with smooth why is smooth is smooth because its texture is smooth because its texture is smooth because it does not have longitude or sorry it does not have alternative light and dark band so it has smooth texture because it has no alternative light or dark band that's why they are also known as unstriped or non striated unstriped or non striated also known as visceral or visceral muscle why it is known as a visceral muscle because it is present in visceral organ what are your visceral organs the organs which are hollow inside like your stomach like your small intestine these all are visceral organs also this muscle is involuntary not under your control if i say this muscle is in your stomach can you control the churning movement of stomach no i can't do that so that's why we call it as involuntary it's not under your control it's under the control of autonomic nervous system which we'll be discussing in the neural control and coordination right so let's talk about the muscle cell the muscle cell is fusiform in shape it's fusiform fusiform or spindle shape what is a fusiform or spindle shape that means thicken in the center whereas tapering at the ends so you can see it has taper ends 
So how many nucleus do you see? I have already drawn one. So it is uninucleated and nucleus in the center. So just like skeletal muscle, it will also be having myofibrils because without actin and myosin, the muscle cannot contract. Actin and myosin are contractile proteins of your muscle. Okay. So yes, it will be having myofibrils, but they are longitudinally present like this. So that's why there is no alternative light and dark bands. There, the myofibrils are present transversely. That's why the alternative light and dark bands were there. There was a pattern in the alternate fashion and the sarcomeres were formed. And in this smooth muscle, the, uh, the myofibrils are longitudinally placed. Myofibrils are longitudinally placed. Right? So this one have no sarcolemma. Yes, it has just normal plasma membrane. The specialized sarcolemma is not there. No sarcomere. And it does not get fatigue as well. Has your stomach ever said to you, I am tired, please don't eat food. Never, yeah, never. So it does not get fatigue. Does not get fatigue. Fine. So where do you find the smooth muscles? You will find the smooth muscles in your stomach in your intestine, in your blood vessel and even hair follicles, yes, hair follicles, uterus, urinary bladder, all these visceral organs, visceral organs are organs which are hollow inside, you will find the smooth muscle, fine, okay, let's talk about the types of smooth muscles. So we have two types of smooth muscle. We have two types of smooth muscles. My dear students, listen to me very carefully. One is single unit and another is multi-unit. Okay. See, if you will, uh, uh, you will learn all the types of muscles and its feature in this chapter, the locomotion and movement half of the chapter is done, I tell you. Then you just have to talk about how muscles work. Okay, so that's why I always tell uh, kids that please pay attention in the muscles part here. Locomotion will be quite easier for you then. Okay, since you have done cartilage, the joints will be easier for you. Since you have done if muscles here, the muscle portion will be easier for you. Why not to, you know, have an advantage of all these things? <laughs> okay, so single unit and multi unit, how they are different. In single unit, all these muscle fibers or muscle cells, they are joined to each other via gap junctions, yes. So in single unit, gap junctions are present. Gap junctions are present. So if an electrical impulse via neuron come to this cell, it will tell the information to these cells, okay, via gap junctions, all right. Now, in multi-unit, all the cells, they are not attached to each other with gap junction. So, all have to take an extra impulse or all have to take their individual electrical impulse or excitation for the contraction. So, here they are working as single unit because uh, if one will get, everyone will work on it. Okay? Like a team. Like if the leader of a team knows the information, it will tell to all. Here, they work separately. They work separately. What's an example of the multi-unit? Your hair follicle muscle. What's the example of single unit? Like your stomach. Okay. So that's the uh, difference between them. So the question that is asked is, does smooth muscles have uh, the junctions? Yes, they do have. Usually, uh, the junctions, cell junctions are the characteristic feature of epithelial cells. That's why we study there. So, all epithelial cells will be having. But all muscle does not have all the types of junction. Some have, like skeletal muscle, does not have the junctions. Whereas, these have the gap junctions. Next, we have, my dear students, a question for you. Find the incorrect option regarding smooth muscle. You have to find the incorrect one. The smooth muscle fibers tapers at both ends fusiform and do not show striations. It is voluntary in action. It helps in peristalsis in gut. Cell junctions are present. Okay. First is true. We have to find the incorrect one. Because they are fusiform like this. 
they are not voluntary they are involuntary they help in peristalsis and gut yes it's present in intestine intestine is your gut then cell junctions are present like gap junctions so answer to this question will be two all right next next we have the cardiac muscle you all know where the cardiac muscle present cardia word is used for heart so they are present in heart present in heart all right this is also involuntary like we say na no one can control their heart no one can control their heart and feelings for anyone just like that because you cannot control it so that's why it's involuntary all right talking about the cell what is the shape of a cell so it has certain features of smooth muscle and certain features of your uh, skeletal muscle let's start with the feature of skeletal muscle it is cylindrical just like that of uh, skeleton it also have sarcolemma it also have sarcomere yes it do have sarcomere but like smooth muscle it is involuntary and uninucleated and uninucleated now let's talk about the unique feature of skeletal uh, cardiac muscle it is branched it is branch and it has gap junction now it has two types of gap junction oh sorry cell junction it has cell junctions one cell junction as i've already revealed by mistake <laughs> is a gap junction another is a desmosome another is a desmosome for that you for understanding that you need to know the structure of the uh, cardiac muscle fiber one more important uh, feature of a smooth muscle that it do not get fatigue right it also do not get fatigue the moment your heart say na i am fatigue you will be fatigue <laughs> okay let's draw the diagram so this is how it looks like the cylindrical muscle and it is branched like this so these bridges are going on on the another muscle fiber cell like this this is one cell this is another cell just like this okay this is also oblique bridge in between two muscle fibers or cells are present these disc like structure known as intercalated disc these intercalated disc have cell junctions have cell junction if i say it has cell junction known as gap junction what will be its function it will also the skeletal muscle fibers will also function as a single unit muscle they will also function as a single unit muscle all all right what's the function of desmosome it's adhering junction so its function will also be adhering or cementing two cells together all right so it will also be having alternative light and dark bands like this these will also be present but they will be faint not as prominent as the skeletal muscle so it will be having faint light and dark bands light and dark bands all right that's about the cardiac muscle let's move further and do these questions yes do these question choose the incorrect match skeletal muscle fibers multinucleated very true cardiac muscle fibers are branch very true visceral muscles are involuntary very true smooth muscles are cylindrical no they are fusy form so answer to this question boys and girls will be four next okay next we have is all right i think i missed a page here no problem okay the next issue that we are going to discuss is the neural or nervous tissue neural or a nervous tissue so don't be nervous because we are going to start nervous tissue <laughs> all right so nervous tissue is ectodermal in origin what is the origin again ectodermal except microglial cell what's the origin of microglial cell you all know that mesoderm so if i talk about what are these cells uh, these uh, neural or nervous tissues made up of you will be surprised to know two types of cells so yes what are these cells present in the tissue one is a neuron another is a neuroglial cells neuroglial cells okay neuron are the structural and functional unit of nervous tissue 
so they are the main sense structural and functional cell they are excitable cells they are excitable cells that means they can conduct the nerve impulse they can generate and both conduct the nerve impulse that means they can create that electricity whereas neuroglial cells though they are more than 50 percent uh, constituents of the nervous tissue but they are not excitable cells right so they are more than 50 percent of the nervous tissue but they are not excitable they are not excitable but they have a property that they can divide whereas neurons they cannot divide because neurons are differentiated cells they cannot divide but they can divide neuroglial cells are like nurse cells they they can repair the neurons they will take care of the neurons but they will not themselves uh, conduct the excitability okay so these one they okay they repair they repair the neurons so they are like nurse okay so let's draw the structure of a neuron in the detail so i think you all have colored pens because if your ma'am uses so much color i think the student should also use so much color in their diagrams all right so let's draw the structure of a neuron so this is how a neuron looks like So do not get disheartened by ma'am, you have drawn it uh, so quickly and we are just here only. Take your time and draw it, no problem. I am a ma'am and you are a student and ma'am is like older, you know, and uh, elder to you. I have a lot of experience, that's why I can draw so fast. The moment you will become doctor, you will write medicines like this then it's again experience, right? <laughs> okay, so the entire body of the neuron is divided into two parts this and this okay so the first part is cell body the above one which contains a main component of the cell also known as cyton or perikaryon all right so the above this part is the cell body and this part is the exon okay so as it is a main cell part it will be having a nucleus it will be having the golgi bodies it will be having these fibers known as neurofibrils for support and it will be having small small granules known as nizzle's body or nizzle granules okay so first of all you can see this structure what are these these are dendrites dendrites are afferent that means they will be bringing the information from the other neuron they will be bringing the information from another neuron second thing these are what this is your nucleus you all know that this is golgi body what's the function of golgi body golgi apparatus or golgi body that same that you will study in the botany as well in the cell chapter so golgi body's function is packaging it helps in packing substances then we have the structure known as neurofibrils the function of neurofibril is it will provide support these are like fibers yes so your neuron uh, you know it is performing very important function if any of a neuron gets damaged in your brain uh, everything will you know you maybe you will get some neurodegenerative disorder or not i i will not pray that you will get god's sake right but uh, if any of a neuron gets damaged a lot of connections that are built by that neuron they will get damaged just like if one wire in the entire house get damaged the entire electricity goes off just like that right so that's why we also want so to support them so that's why you have neurofibrils then we have these small granules known as nizzle bodies or nizzle granules these nizzel granules or nizzel body they have ribosomes and rough endoplasmic reticulum so that means one thing that they will do is protein synthesis and they are gray in color what is their color gray in color now coming down to this portion, this one, this portion is exon hillock. This is a portion of cyton. It's a portion of cyton only. Okay. This portion, 
or is of a cyton it is known as exon hillock why because from here the exon starts and just down there is present here a trigger zone it's just like a trigger of gun from there the speed of nerve impulse it enhances and it moves like shoo right so it's a trigger zone down there this is exon and exon is wrapped by certain cells known as schwann cells what are they schwann cells so for example this is exon they are wrapped like this by certain cells and these cells they secrete white color myelin sheath which is a lipid so imagine if i open it i can find white color covering around here okay so these are the cells which are wrapping exon and they are secreting the white color phospholipid so the name of these cells are schwann cell right and what are they secreting here they are secreting white color myelin sheath myelin sheath and myelin sheath is a phospholipid and wherever phospholipid comes that means that particular place will become insulated so i can say that that myelin sheath is an insulator okay it performs a function of insulation so wherever my myelin sheath will be present here from here electrical impulse will not move but electrical impulse will move on these places where myelin sheath is not present and you call it as node of ranvier it's not ranvier okay it's ranvier node of ranvier is a place where myelin sheath is absent where myelin sheath is absent now come down to these swelling button like structures these are known as synaptic knobs what are these synaptic knobs or end bulbs or end bulbs now what these synaptic knobs and end bulbs have they have small vesicles which are filled with chemicals these are known as synaptic vesicles what are these synaptic vesicles these vesicles have chemicals known as neurotransmitters contains chemicals known as neurotransmitter like some of the neurotransmitter you must have heard of is acetylcholine acetyl choline this is one example i am giving you ach okay so when one neuron has to communicate with another neuron it will form some junction like between two epithelial cell we have cell junction but here we also have some junction these are known as synaptic junction for example this is one neuron this is another neuron this is neuron 1 this is neuron 2 you can see both these neurons are not touching each other so it's not a physical contact it's a it's a physiological contact so here these two cells they are connecting to each other and this place is known as synapse or synaptic junction synapse or synaptic junction is a point of communication between two neuron and it can also be between two neuron uh, between a neuron and a muscle but there that synapse will be known as neuromuscular junction so here how they will communicate these have these neurotransmitters they will release a neurotransmitter and the information will be sent to the adjacent neuron and the adjacent neuron will become excited so how do they communicate these who have these vesicles and neurotransmitter they will send it to the neuron 2 this is neuron 2 and hence neuron 2 will become excitable this is how they function okay so here also if the synapse is between a neuron and a muscle if this is a muscle what will you call it as you will call it as neuromuscular junction neuromuscular junction okay so it's a neuron and this is a okay so what's this down part known as i think i have not labeled it this is the exon so that's about your neuron let's talk about the types of neuroglial cells so neuroglial cells which are a kind of your nerve cells so they are of various kind first we have is astrocyte the first cell which we are going to discuss is astrocyte aster word word okay the astro word comes from star they appear or they look like a star they are like a star okay so what are the functions it perform it insulate the neuron 
it insulates the neuron, it repairs the neuron, and it forms blood brain barrier. Okay, now what is this blood brain barrier? So, if this is your brain, these are the neurons of your brain. Okay, and this is your blood vessel. We never want that a blood should get in direct contact with the brain tissue. We never want that a blood should get in direct contact with the brain tissue. Why? Because you know this blood might contain some microbes, it might contain some antibody. What if by chance these microbes and antibodies enters your brain and damage the neurons? And neurons cannot divide, you, never, you can never form new neurons. So if a neuron is damaged, it's damaged forever. So what nature has done? The nature has drawn a barrier between them okay so that's a barrier which is formed by two types of cell one are the astrocytes like this and another are ependymal cell so here are also another cells present ependymal cells so these are also kind of the neuroglial cell so two neuroglial cells that form blood brain barrier is your astrocyte and Ependymal cell, ependymal cell, ependymal cells, they are also kind of neuroglial cell. They are also a kind of neuroglial cell. Okay, so they are forming a barrier. Now the blood has to pass through this barrier and only then it can enter into your brain. So a lot of things will get filtered now. Yes, it's just like a filtration. All right, so next we have are your oligodendrocyte microglial cell. So, uh, these cells, oligodendrocytes, microglial cell, and uh, your, these astrocytes, these all are the cells present in central nervous system. Central nervous system means brain and spinal cord. So, oligodendrocyte, they form myelin sheath. Now, you will say, ma'am, you have told the Schwann cell forms myelin sheath. Very true. But they are forming myelin sheath in CNS, central nervous system. Central nervous system. Okay, that means in the brain and spinal cord. What about microglial cell? They are the macrophages. What are macrophages? And they are the smallest cell. The macrophages are the one that will engulf microbes. And what do you call it as engulfing the microbes? Phagocytosis. Phagocytosis. Fine. So, if you have noticed, every tissue is given something uh, which can kill the microbes, isn't it? That's so lovely. <laughs> okay. Then we have your ependymal cell. They look like this. So, we have already discussed. They form blood-brain barrier. They form blood-brain barrier. And now you understand what is a blood-brain barrier. Next we have is your, uh, the cells present in the uh, uh, peripheral nervous system. Now, if someone doesn't know what is the central and peripheral nervous system, let me explain you. Okay, so this is the brain and this is the spinal cord. This is central nervous system. Brain and spinal cord, they together form central nervous system. All the nerves, all the nerves that are coming from here, all the nerves that are coming from here, they are Peripheral nervous system that is that is forming your peripheral nervous system. Okay, what is the nerves? They are the group of exon. Nerves are the group of exon. Okay, all right. So what about satellite cell? They also repair the neurons. They also repair the neurons. And Schwann cell they form myelin sheath. They form myelin sheath. This is how Schwann cell look like. This is the exon as you can see here. Right? It forms myelin sheath in peripheral nervous system okay the most common question that is asked is which forms myelin sheath in pns and cns that you should know and also you should be knowing at least the names of neuroglial cells all right so that was about your neuroglial cells okay my dear students let's solve this question neuroglial cells are not associated with response to stimulus protection of neuron forming blood brain barrier ability to divide so neuroglial cells yes they can divide they can also form blood brain barrier protection of neuron but they cannot respond to a stimulus that means if they respond to a stimulus they will be excitable they will generate the current so answer is one 
okay what is excitability that means if someone touches me like this okay for example you i'm sitting in a table and a person from behind touch me here so this is a kind of a stimulus that give and now i'll move back why because that stimulus leads to excitability and that excitability from my neurons goes to my muscles and my muscles bend like this and i now i'm saying hi what's the problem <laughs> okay so this is how they uh, look like all right so some of our questions were left from the connective tissue which i told you that we'll be doing in the later stages because you have not done the connective tissue yet so let me just show those question and we'll be solving them okay so where are you my dear questions okay okay all right okay here solve this question guys choose a correctly matched pair tendon is a specialized connective tissue no tendon is the dense connective tissue adipose is a loose connective tissue areolar is a loose cartilage is specialized so answer is three next question this one which type of tissue correctly match with its location cuboidal no in the lining of stomach what do we have we have columnar smooth muscle yes it's in the wall of intestine areolar is not tendon it's dense whereas transitional tip of the nose is a cartilage in transitional we have urothelium in the urinary system so answer is two so here we have successfully covered the animal tissue part all right i hope you will solve it very nicely you will do each and every question make notes good notes of everything and in the next class i'll be teaching you cockroach so get ready with the cockroach it's going to be very 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 interesting yes i tell you tissues are little you know kind of a thing you have to learn and mug up things so you don't find it so interesting ma'am please no start with the human physiology now why tissues see everything is important if it is coming in the exams or it is asked in the exams we just can't leave it i'm your teacher i know i know i can't leave things like that i know what's good for my students right i don't want to do harm to you know i want that you should get full marks in the biology full 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 marks all right so let me know in the comments how interesting uh, this topic was and uh, i'll meet in the next class we'll do the cockroach so from here we have started our zoology enough with the botany now let's do something interesting all right so i'll meet in the next class bye bye take care lots of love to my lovely students